Okay, so we know from the lectures that the sample mean is an estimator for the population expectation. And we're going to do two things in this video. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to show that the sample mean, or X bar, is, is an unbiased estimator of the population expectation. We're then going to calculate the variance of the sample mean. So let's start with proving that X bar is an unbiased estimator of the population expectation. So we know that the formula for the sample mean x bar is equal to 1 over n times by the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of xi. We've got several assumptions. We've got an assumption that the all of the xi are iid random variables. So in other words they are independent and identically distributed. The expectation of each of the xi's is equal to mu of x, or the overall population expectation, and the variance in our population, the variance of the x's, is equal to sigma squared x for all of the observations. So we've got that x bar is equal to 1 over n times by the sum of the xi's. If this is unbiased, then the expectation of our x bar would be equal to e of x, if it's unbiased. So let's find what the expectation of x bar is equal to. So this is equal to the expectation of 1 over n times by the sum of xi. Now we're going to need to use our rules related to expectations here in order to assess this. And remember, if we've got the expectation of a linear combination of random variables, so the expectation of ax plus by, where x and y are random variables and a and b are constants, then this is just equal to a times by the expectation of x plus b times by the expectation of y. Now what we have here is a linear combination of n random variables, x1, x2, x3, x4, all the way up to OK, so let's make a little bit of room for ourselves. So we can rewrite this expectation of x bar as being equal to 1 over n, because 1 over n multiplies everything within the summation, times by the expectation of x1 plus the expectation of x2 plus the expectation of x3 plus all the way up to the expectation of xn. But we could rewrite this as just being equal to the sum of the expectations. We know that the expectation of xi is just equal to e of x, or is equal to mu x in each of these cases from our assumptions earlier, because the x's are, xi's are all iid. So this gives us that this is equal to 1 over n times by the sum of the expectation of xi, but that's always equal to mu of xi. So we've got n lots of e of x here, so that's times by n lots of mu x, which is just equal to mu x, which, remember, is just equal to the expectation of x. So we now move into the second part of the question, and here we're going to try and prove that, or we're going to try and calculate the variance of the sample mean. So, we know that the sample mean x bar is equal to 1 over n times by the sum of the xi's, from i is equal to 1 to n, and we're going to try and calculate the variance, or the level of variability, of x bar. So the variance of x bar is just going to be equal to the variance of 1 over n times by the sum of the xi's. We need to use some rules relating to variances. We know that if we combine two random variables, then the variance of ax plus by is going to be equal to a squared times by the variance of x plus b squared times by the variance of y. We're not quite finished yet. We also need plus two times a times b times by the covariance between x and y. So what we're doing here is we're combining n of these 
random variables in a summation. So we're going to find the variance of all of this. So we're going to have a whole load of covariant terms included. So this variance is going to be equal to, we've got one over n is a constant multiplier all the way through. So we can take that out the front, we can square it. So that's going to be equal to one over n squared times by the variance of x1 plus the variance of x2 plus dot 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 plus the variance of xn. But then we're also going to have a whole load of covariance terms. So then it's going to be plus two lots of the covariance between x1 and x2 plus two lots of the covariance between x1 and x3 and so on. Now we can rewrite this entire summation as being two summations, so 1 over n squared times by the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of the variance of xi plus two lots of the sum from i is equal to 1 to n minus 1 and the sum from j is equal to i plus 1 to n of the covariance between xi and xj. So this is just taking account of all of those covariance terms. But let's think back to our assumptions. Our assumptions earlier was that the x are iid. So they're independent from each other. So that follows that the covariance terms are all going to be equal to zero. So because the xi and the xj are always independent, this covariance term will always be equal to zero. So we can rewrite this, since the xi and the xj are independent, it's going to be equal to 1 over n squared times by the sum of the variances. And the variances are always equal to sigma squared x. So we've got n lots of the variance here. So this is going to be equal to n sigma squared x over n squared, which is equal to sigma squared x over n. So the variance of x bar is just equal to the variance of x divided by n here.